Welcome to Tech Open Air 2014. Um, my name is Felicita Sekman, I'm from Venture Village, and today I'm talking to Chet Sanders from Dev Bootcamp. Welcome, how are you today? Um, fantastic, how are you? Good, <laughs> nice to have you here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from, what's your age, what do you do? Yeah, sure, uh, I'm from Silver Spring, Maryland originally. Um, I am 26 years old. I <laughs> am a partner at Dev Bootcamp, which is uh, an 18 week intense immersive bootcamp for people with any level of technical acumen who wanna be full stack web developers. Um, we're based in San Francisco, Chicago, and New York. And I am here in Berlin for the TOA conference, obviously, and also to uh, make some friends and, and sort of gauge our opportunities here in Berlin for expansion into this city. All right. Well, with tech developing more and more, and of course more and more developer, um, well, demand for developers, who came up with the idea and um, when? Yeah, so uh, the founder of our company, a guy named Sharif Bichet, uh, two years ago in 2012, he you know, he himself is a developer and he had some friends who were, who did not have um, coding abilities. They had not yet been trained. And so they came to him and said, <clears throat> you know, Sharif, as, as the story would have it, um, can you teach us how to be coders? Can you teach us, you know, some Ruby? Can you teach us, you know, whatever it is that we can learn pretty quickly and on the fly? And, and he put together sort of a hodgepodge curriculum just for his friends to help sort of upskill them to a point where they could do some very basic coding. Um, he delivered it by himself. He sort of, he was the facilitator. He delivered that curriculum to them there in San Francisco, just in kind of group settings here and there. And they found it really valuable. They, they learned a lot from it. They, you know, they spoke very highly of it. And so they encouraged him to create a more sort of packaged curriculum that he could then scale out to a larger group of students. Um, and as sort of the, as the, the intertwinings went, he eventually turned that into a larger company where he hired uh, several facilitators like himself to teach other people how to code in, in this nine week curriculum, um, which started off, I believe, as a 12 week curriculum and then was condensed to nine weeks. So it's sort of this like learn fast, fail fast model where you, you sort of rush people into learning, you, you sort of over, you know, you almost overwhelm them with the material, um, but then you give them really, really close attention and really, really close um, sort of mentoring to help them kind of work through it and work backwards and, and, and learn the material without uh, totally drowning them in it. All right. So, okay. no, no, um, sorry. Um, what else do they learn besides, excuse me, besides coding, what else do they learn? Yeah, so in addition to, to coding there, um, because it's such an immersive program, the students do about 100 to 120 hours a week in this on-site. So good. that includes like weekends. A lot of them will come in around 7 or 8 a.m. and not leave until 2 or 3 in the morning. Uh, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> intense. So because of that, um, we also have looked at, or we also have included in the program uh, mandatory yoga. There's a psychologist on, on campus and all three campuses. Um, we also have like hip hop dance classes. We also have uh, emotional intelligence courses, sort of. So we will take like two or three hours out of the week for each cohort. There's three cohorts in the school at each at any time, and they will sit in a room together and they'll have a training on um, understanding their super ego or understanding sexism in the workplace and ways to sort of dissipate uh, bro gramming culture. Um, they learn about understanding you know their own emotional intelligence how you can drop the water line and find empathy points with other people uh so we we do a full like right and left brain massage in the program so that when these people are then moved into the market which is something that we also help them with is transitioning into the job market when they get back into the market you know they'll be able to create a culture of programming that's more conducive to human awareness and empathy and and a more sort of uh loving warm culture in that way all right um how old are the students that start your program uh it's funny because we're always calling them kids Mo a lot of them are older <laughs> than me though and uh, they're generally between the ages of i'd say like 22 to 28 mm -hmm. um so a lot of folks come directly after university we have other people who will work for a few years and then they recognize that whatever they're doing in the, in the workplace they don't enjoy it or it's not providing them you know, the quality of living that they were hoping for when they came out of university. Um, so then they'll come to our program to, to readjust and to, and to raise to a higher quality of living by joining into the, the programming world. We've had 
Um, one of my favorite stories is uh, one of the students in the New York office who came. He's probably around 50 years old. Oh. He left uh, IBM where he was working for, for tw- I think, around 20 years okay. um, as a program manager and doing some other things. And he, you know, he wanted to be uh, closer to the technical space. So he came to our program to learn coding. Um, IBM called him, or I should say Company X. I don't know if I should throw <laughs> their name out there, but Some they called him. With the three yeah, letter. yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Some tech IT. company. Um, they <laughs> called him a couple weeks into the program and said, you know, we're about to make some layoffs. We really need you to come back and sit in your seat while we deal with sort of this restructuring and movement. Um, and he, you know, he really, he he has a family. You know, he had some responsibilities, and he really sat and took some time to think about what they were asking him to do. Um, and he eventually got back to them and said that he was going to stay in the program. And he wow. just finished this past Friday. So it's sort of stories like his that are compelling to us to, to move forward and continue to push the program and the brand and make partnerships with companies and show that there's value in these students so that people like him will be able to have the life that they're looking for when they exit the program um, because they really do have faith in it and they, and they stick with it. All right. And um, did that guy or do all the students have some kind of um, knowledge already or could it just be me not having any idea about programming and just coming, learning and get out there? Yeah. So it, there's a large variance in there, but we, we really do. We have like an admissions um, bar. So we do interviews. We do application processes. We, uh, we admit about 25 to 30 percent of the people who apply to us. But More so than we're looking for a technical acumen, we're just looking for you know a, a certain bar of intelligence, obviously, and, and, an, and an ability to learn, which we think most people have anyway. Um, but we're also sort of we're looking for people that fit our culture and our mission, which is to you know provide exquisite livelihood for for everyone. Um, so we want people that will be open to bringing their whole selves to work, who will be willing to connect with the other students on a level beyond just as you know co-students as, as co-workers. We want people that. Uh, will create a better atmosphere of learning and will help us move away from the bro sort of gross culture that you can find in some workplaces. Um, and if, if the students demonstrate that, you know, no matter where they're from, no matter how old, uh, generally we, we will want them to be a part of our program and we'll take a flyer on them. All right. And um, the U.S. is kind of known for being a little bit pricey when it comes to education. Mm. How is that with you guys? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting... Uh, sort of complex little problem, little nut to crack for us. So um, the U.S. is, like, education in the U.S. is grossly overpriced. You know, we have this really, really just sort of disgusting cost inflation and, and, and cost paradox as it go, comes to education. So a large part of our program, like a large part of what we do as a program is we're trying to provide people with a better option or a more affordable option for folks to come and learn the technical skills that they need to be hireable for, for, for technical skills in the workplace without having to pay like 150K to 200K for a computer science degree and sit four years um, and, and sit out four years of their life for that theoretical learning practice. Mm-hmm. So instead what we offer is our program obviously for this like 18 weeks, nine weeks on site, nine weeks remotely to, to learn the same skills in an accelerated program and then be ready to go into the workplace. Um, the issue though is that to have awesome trainers and awesome facilitators in the U.S., it's expensive because, you know, we want we want to pay those people well. We want those people to feel compensated for all the value that they're bringing to us as a program. So right now the program in the U.S. is $12,500 for a student, um, which we recognize is very expensive and prices us out of a lot of a lot of people. So what we're looking at now is building scholarships and sponsorships with partner companies that, you know, that find value in our mission and that also want to reach our students. Um, but now, you know, as I'm here and we're, we're looking at like the Berlin market, we recognize that every country is different as it regards to how they think about education. And yeah. Germany, um, as I'm learning, you know, Germans are not interested in paying for education. They, they you know, ed- education is like a it's a it's a constant in life. You're so it's supposed to yeah. be free um, as the Germans feel. And as I also like think about education. So we're going to have to take a very careful look at the price point and the way that we think about how we exchange value here if we enter the Berlin market um, because it seems like, you know, you know, there's just a different way of thinking about that. All right. And have you been running through the program as well yourself? 
Are I have not taking... yet gone through the program. Um, I am Will you? ostensibly, I am a muggle. So I am one, one of the ones without the coding ability still. Uh, and largely because, you know, my own college where I attended college, which was a really awesome school, um, didn't, didn't offer the same level of sort of coding training and, and computer science uh, when I was in university. So the short answer to your question is that, yeah, yes, I will go through the program. Um, okay. It's almost essentially required for all staff to go through the program, even though that's not yet in writing. And we've also just begun to roll out a, a sort of elongated but less intense version of the program mm -hmm. to our staffers so that they can continue to work full time while also taking um, the basic trainings. All right. And you just mentioned that you were thinking about expanding. Um, Berlin seems a good place, I guess. Um, yeah. Is there any other place that you're looking at right now? Yeah, we've taken a look at uh, Sydney and London. We've gone to visit London as well. Um, we're taking a look at a couple different uh, sites in South America, perhaps. I personally am biased to Berlin because they, <laughs> I just love sort of the vibe and the energy and, and kind of the human to human connected spirit of the city. I think that it really, I think it translates well to like the things that we do with yoga and human empathy awareness and kind of all the funky hippie stuff that's going on where we're at. Um, so I, I am personally hoping and trying to eschew the confirmation bias that I felt as I'm here and thinking that everything is a sign that we should come to Berlin. Mm -hmm. um, I, I personally think that this would be a really awesome environment for us. The, the feel of sort of the startup culture that's growing up, the factory over there um, with SoundCloud and a couple of the other companies and just everything that's that's kind of taking place in Central and East, East Berlin really feels a lot like the Bay, like San Francisco, mm -hmm. Silicon Valley used to feel um, when I started there at Google a few years ago, and then also like uh, parts of Silicon Alley there in New York where we're at. So uh, to me, it, it, it has become almost a no-brainer in the days that I've spent here, um, and hopefully I can prove that to the rest of the partners. Well, it certainly sounds really interesting, and I like the idea of having students and teachers in a classroom again, teaching extra skills and not sending them all to Code Academy or something. Um, best of luck, it was nice Thank having you. you, and enjoy the conference. Thanks a lot. <laughs>